Okay guys, here we are today. We are going to be doing some test runs on the different mods of the F-15 EX. Uh, what we're going to do is test more specifically the mod 1.6, the mod 1.72, and then the mod 1.8 plus. Um, just to kind of go over the differences between each of the mods and to uh, show you uh, the improvements that have been made over time. Uh, first we're going to take a look at the payloads for each of these aircraft and then from there we'll segue into the uh, the takeoff for each of the aircraft and then the last thing we will do is look at uh, the radar and the radar uh, capabilities of each of the different mods. Uh, so first things first, here's the biggest uh, standout between the 1.6 and the 1.72 and the uh, the newest mod that's been released. Um, which actually at the moment is still in beta testing. This, this video won't be uh, posted until after uh, Spino actually releases the newest mod. Uh, I'm just going over the differences at the moment. So here we are with the 1.6. Um, it allows the, the C7 and the C5 on the outer uh, pylons. Again, the C7, which is a, it's a, which a, is a really good missile. Um, it's not shabby at all. It's a very lethal missile again. And again, we've got the C7. Everything on this side should be duplicable on this other side. Obviously, you can throw in a fuel tank. We're not going to go over the air-to-ground stuff at all. Um, and again, C7, C5, regular Cs. Uh, on f and then you can also get these in the dual... Um, you can throw in two on each of the pylons, which is uh, tremendous, when, especially when you compare it to the C model or even the E. Uh, so just on this side of the aircraft alone, you got the full range of the A9 Charlies from the C5, C7. Um, obviously, or rather, you'd, yeah, from the C5 to the C7, you could only take one regular Charlie, which, you know, who would want to do that? But here's the biggest difference between the... 1.6 and the rest of the aircraft that are modded out you can take a pod which is the legion pod i'm not sure quite sure what that is um yeah you've got the same limitations which is going to be your hundred and twenty chaff flare i know with the uh, ewash you can double that so pretty much two hundred and forty but so I'm not sure what the the Legion pod is doing, but this is the game changer right here with the 1.6 that isn't on the other ones, which is the centerline fuel tank that you can take with you. Now, obviously, uh, again, I can everything on this side of the aircraft I can duplicate on the other side of the aircraft. So we'll just show that. And then also let's take a look at the max gross weight. So this is your loadout. This is the loadout, loadout we used to roll with when we were flying with the 1.6. Um, it was doing a lot of, uh, it, it was killing it ourselves a lot. The missile would fly into the aircraft, but still a very good mod. I don't think it was the actual aircraft's fault. Uh, I think more so it had something to do with the missiles, but... Anything. Anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and take a quick pause. The next aircraft we're going to showcase is going to be the 1.72. Okay, guys, now we are taking a look at the current mod that is out, which is going to be... Actually, this is, I guess, at the time of the release, this is going to be the... the uh, not the latest version, but uh, the version that's been current... just That's out at the moment, but the version that... Uh, was previously released this is the 1.72 and we're going to go do a quick look at uh, some of the difference between that and the other mods so first things first um, again the lethality of this aircraft changed and changed quite a bit um, the 1.71 and the 1.72 really um, introduced a couple of missiles that are essentially game changers uh, they have since the uh, they introduced the Peregrine so you can put four of the AIM-200 Peregrines on the outer pylon. And the big one, which I go with very often, is going to be the AIM-120 Delta. 
Um, it's got improved performance over the AIM-120C, both the C5 and C7 variant. This thing is a game changer. I mean, it is very lethal. Uh, so that's kind of the biggest change. I, I know in the previous video, the 1.6, um, it had pretty much the same thing, but again, we've got the uh, 120 Delta. I don't use the 9 X-ray at all. And I've seen, we, we, we are throwing long range missiles at bandits. I'm um, trying to get them into the mar of these missiles, especially the 120 Delta. And then from there, we try to get away from you. Um, so if we're merged, something has gone terribly wrong. And we have, uh, within the tactics of the 122nd, we, we have wingmen to back each other, back us up. So we don't typically carry the 9 x ray But it is available. It's a nice feature to have. Um, Taking a look at the pylons three, you can also throw weapons on the second pylon as well. The Peregrine uh, load up with four or the <laughs> or the uh, 120 Delta, which I mean this thing turns into an absolute beast at this point. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I mean this is ten missiles on one half of the aircraft. Uh, but as we start looking in closer again, same options. Um, the Delta. You can have that in a single uh, uh, AIM-120C or, again, you can load it up with something like two AIM-120 Deltas, which, why wouldn't you? So, uh, the biggest difference between these aircraft and the 1.6 is now it's in introducing the EPOS. Um, I think it's the Eagle Passive Active Warning something system. I don't know. You can look that up on Google. But uh, with the e pause now, again, I've essentially doubled the amount of countermeasures that I can take up into the air. Whereas with the uh, the 1.6, I can only take up to 120. Now I can take 240. And you can uh, you know, move this around as you need. Uh, looks like you can actually take more. Yeah, you can, it looks like up to 300 countermeasures if you want to go flare uh, chaff heavy. I typically will go, looks like you can go 330 chaff. I will typically go go flare heavy uh, because of the fact I'm not using the chaff too much, but that's my preference. Um, the option for the center fuel tank is no longer available. And again, everything that you can load up on the, on uh, the, this side of the aircraft, you can load up on the other side. So with that said, we'll jump now to the 1.8 plus. Okay guys, last but not least, this is going to be the uh, mod 1.8. I'm going to call it the 1.8 plus. And just to be clear, this this uh, aircraft, or this mod rather, is still under beta testing. Uh, Spino has not released this variant, and this video will not be released until after Spino releases uh, this variant of the aircraft. Um, I'm just showing you the difference. I'm calling it the 1.8 plus. It may be called the 1.9, whatever the case may be. But again, uh, if it's if it's the 1.9 or 1.8, again, it's the the mod that's coming after the 1.72. So with that said, um, with the 1.8, it's not too much different than the other mod. Um, you can. Uh, the weapons configuration didn't change too much. It's got the 9x available, the Peregrine, the uh, AIM-200, as well as the the C, the C7, and the AIM-120D uh, available. And again, the AIM-120D, out of all of these, are the the most lethal uh, thing that we can strap onto the aircraft. Um, so yeah, nothing different, nothing change too much. Again, I can throw paragrams on the outer pylon, um, which is nice. 9Xs are available, paragrime, 120D, and then also you can throw in the C5, um, as you guys can see, going towards the inner pylons. The inner pylons obviously can take more weight, so you have a, uh, a wider range of different weapons you can throw on them. Um, but yeah, this is <coughs> this is a very good mod and again 
the biggest thing to me was with the 1.72 and now the 1.8 plus, what we're calling the 1.8 plus, you can't throw on the center line fuel tank. But again, with the uh, EPOS system, we've got a lot more uh, countermeasures that we can put to usage. So that's the biggest advantage just from the outside looking in of the 1.8. Just from the outside looking in, the 1.8 plus and the 1.72 look very familiar but as you'll see in this next round of uh, testing they're very different aircraft all right so stay tuned and i'll get you uh i'll show you why uh the differences are so noticeable noticeable between the 1.72 and the 1.8 although i'm also going to be showing you the uh, 1.6 first Okay, now we are back in the mod 1.6. I'm going to show you the uh, differences in takeoff acceleration. All the uh, mods are going to be kitted out the same way. Two fuel tanks and loaded up with the most lethal uh, M120 we have. So for in this case, with the 1.6, that being the C7. So with that said, we're not going to run them up. We're starting uh, pretty much at the approach in the runway. And we're going to take a look at the acceleration. What in the world? Yeah, it's having issues. We're gonna take a look at the acceleration and the airspeed of the uh, the 1.6. All right, accelerating well. Again, the rotate speed is gonna be about 180, and we'll take a look at what airspeed we're at coming off of departure in. But she's accelerating really well. All right, there's 180. Come back slowly. Right, we are airborne. Gear up. coming off the departure in we are at about 330 knots all right so let's take a look at the next aircraft okay guys we're back in the mod 1.72 same loadout as the other one our same load as the mod 1.6 um, so that's what I'm just trying to demonstrate there I don't know why she's yawning like this. This is a bit odd. Alright, so let's take off. And this is going to be the biggest difference. This is why I'm showing the, the takeoff speed because this is something else. She's not accelerating very well at all. I'm full burner. Look how slowly the airspeed is coming forward. I mean, it is coming forward, but just very slowly. And at this point, I'm starting to worry about making my rotate speed because I'm seeing the seeing the black marks of the opposite end of the runway where a guy's touched down at. Anyways, here's 180. Start rotating. Get off the ground, baby. There we go. All right, and I'm passing departure in at 240 knots. Now compare that to the 330 knots I believe I was at the departure in with the 1.6. Alright, so last up is going to be the 1.8 plus. Okay guys, here we are at the 1.8 plus. Um, no real difference. Again, same payload. Um, so let's go ahead and get the, uh, the test started. Here we go. She's accelerating well, especially compared to the 1.72. Already at 150 knots. I'm feeling confident we're going to make it. Start coming back on the stick a little bit. Let's get her in the air. Come on, baby. All right, she's airborne. It's 300. Uh, I'd say 320, 330 again. So the airspeed is co comparable to the uh, 1.6. So uh, really good job with that. Okay, guys, here we are in the 1.6. Um, we've got multiple bandits off our nose, and I'm just trying to figure out what is the earliest. Oh, crap. What's the earliest we'll be able to pick up bandits? And just based off of that we just saw bandits show up and that's going to be about 65 miles ish 
So at about 65 miles, I'm able to detect the aircraft uh, in the 1.6, which isn't bad, but not great. So next up, let's take a look at the 1.72. Okay guys, we are in the 1.8 plus and I had to pause the video because I uh, I pulled the aircraft that I had with the 1.6 and the 1.72 um, that where they were positioned and I pulled them further away from the bandits that I originally had and as soon as I got into the game as you can tell I've already got radar contact with these guys. I don't even have RWR contact with the fighters off my nose. But I have radar contact. So at the moment, if we're just looking purely off of our radar scope, I mean, that first line represents 40, the second line represents 80, the third line 120, and the end of the V scope is 160 miles. I've got radar contact that are roughly 100 miles right now. 100 miles, which is insane. So this is why I wanted to showcase all of the differences between the aircraft. Again, I could tell you, hey, this is the difference between the 1.6, the 1.72, and the 1.8 plus. But just, I don't even need to hit play. Just purely off of this, we've gone from a 60 mile, uh, 65 mile range where I can detect you on radar with the 1.6 and the 1.72. To now I'm looking at you at approximately, let's be conservative, 90, 95 miles. But realistically, that, that's about 100 miles, which significantly combined with the fact now I can see you further out. Combine that with the fact that I got AIM 120 Deltas. I mean, you're in you're in a lot of trouble. You are in a lot of trouble if you're in a fighter going against the 1.8 plus. Combine that with the with its payload. I mean, why well, it's empty here? But you guys saw that. Um, <laughs> want to show you the payload, and I forgot I got it uh, uh, slick. But with that said, I'm going to conclude this video with that. I'm not even going to fly it. You guys can see the range of the radar and the detection of it. Again, with the one point, I'm repeating myself, but I mean, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm able to detect you in the 1.6 and the 1.72 at 65 miles. And here I am looking at you. These are all fighters, just to be clear. Here I'm looking at you at roughly 100 miles off my nose. So with that said, I hope this helps you guys out. I'm excited about the, uh, the new update with the mod. Spino, excellent job. Outstanding job. Uh, Infidel, who I know is also working on this, one of the beta testers, and then I've also worked with as well outstanding job and for the whole uh beta testing team great got job guys i hope this helps out i hope you guys are as excited about the new ex as i am and i hope to see you for the next video